Hi everyone, welcome back to Book Chat. My name is Leslie and I am the Reading Safari and Stream Coordinator for Monterey County Free Libraries. Today I am bringing a book that is um, from the end of the 20th century to talk about and it is called The Hours. It is by Michael Cunningham. Um, it won the Pulitzer Prize. It was published um, in 1998 and it was made into a movie in 2002. You may recall um, that is when Nicole Kidman won her Oscar for playing Virginia Woolf. This book is extremely short, um, just about 226 pages in my copy, and um, but it packs a punch. And this is a book that I have been reading um, since 2001, meaning that is the first year I read it, and I have read it many times over since then. So I figured it was time to give it a... Uh, give it its own little video since I love it so much. So The Hours um, is told from three different points of view. Um, they are all women, all of these points of view. They're all women. They're all connected. And they are all, uh, the points of view, they all take, or the story takes place in um, a day in the life of each of these women. So the first point of view is from Virginia Woolf. She is the great English modernist writer. It was, um, it's telling the story of a day in her life when she was writing Mrs. Dalloway. That's one of her best known novels. And she was, um, was writing it in two, 1923. And so it's telling the story of her writing the story of Mrs. Dalloway. Now, Mrs. Dalloway in her book is this, you know, high class, well-to-do woman who's married. And the first line of the book is, um, Mrs. Dalloway, Mrs. Dalloway said she would buy the flowers herself. So that kind of indicates to us that Mrs. Dalloway, um, has a choice in the matter. She, normally she could probably send her servants to do it, but she wants to buy the flowers herself because she likes doing that kind of thing. Um, so that sentence alone imply, implies a lot of things about her station in life and that she has choices. Um, it's also important to note that Mrs. Dalloway in Virginia Woolf's novel, her first name is Clarissa. And that name has um, a lot of callbacks to other works of literature that have been written. Um, I don't have time to go into them all, but it's a very meaningful name in the canon of literature, okay? So the second point of view is from uh, Clarissa, okay? She is a middle-aged, she's a well, middle-aged, well-off woman. You know, she's married, although she, um, in this book, instead of being in a, um, you know, like a traditional man-woman marriage, she is a lesbian, so. She is a lesbian, but she's well off. She's, and then she is out buying flowers for her friend Richard's party. Um, Richard is a dear friend of hers. They have been, I think, friends maybe since college, if I'm remembering correctly. And, um, you know, now they're middle aged. And Richard is a writer. He has won a very prestigious prize. And so that's what this party is for. And Clarissa is determined to throw him a party, even though he does not want one. And the reason why he does not want one is because he is very sick and he is dying from AIDS. So that's the second point of view, Clarissa. Uh, and another thing is that, that I should mention is that Richard, um, her dear friend, the one who's dying of AIDS, is um, has always affectionately called her Mrs. Dalloway. And so that kind of marks her as the contemporary Mrs. Dalloway in this story. Okay. So moving on to the third point of view, um, this third point of view is from that of Laura Brown. Now, Laura Brown is a 1950s housewife 
and mother. She has a small son and she's pregnant with another baby. And she is, she's very tired. You know, she's pregnant. It's her husband's birthday. And, you know, she knows that she should be making him a cake. She knows that she should be interacting with her son and, you know, just doing all these things that a happy 1950s wife and mother does. And yet she does not want to do them. Instead, she just wants to read her book. And what book is that? Well, it's Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. So this is what one of the greatest things that I love about this novel is that there are so many connections and I'm not going to reveal like the ultimate connection. You know what it is if you've read the book or seen the movie. You know what the big, big spoiler is. But I will say, um, I do want to give a couple of examples and say that like at the beginning of the book when um, Clarissa, the contemporary Mrs. Dalloway, is out buying flowers for Richard's party, she notices um, an actress on set because uh, she's in uh, in New York City, you know. She notices an a actress on set, and she can't quite make out who it is, but one of her guesses for who it might be is Meryl Streep. So the cool thing is, is that Meryl Streep was cast to play the contemporary Mrs. Dalloway in the movie version of The Hours. So I love that so much. That just makes me so happy. Every time I read this book, I'm like, oh my God. That's so cool, you know, that, you know, there's no way he could have known, uh, Michael Cunningham could have known that Meryl Streep was going to be cast to play Mrs. Dalloway. Um, and then there she was mentioned in the book. I just love it so much. Um, another um, connection that I love is knowing what I know w about the working title of um, Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. So it's the published title, obviously, is Mrs. Dalloway, but the working title is, was, sorry, excuse me, The Hours, which Michael Cunningham has taken and made for his own in this, um, in this novel. And I love, love, love that so much. Um, it makes my brain just go like, in like the best possible way. So I do just want to share, um, before I go, my favorite passage in this, um, in this book. Um, it's near the end and it's just, oh, just so good. Okay. Um, so we live our lives, do whatever we do, and then we sleep. It's as simple and ordinary as that. A few jump out of windows or drown themselves or take pills. More die by accident. And most of us, the vast majority, are slowly devoured by some disease. Or if we're very fortunate, by time itself. There's just this for consolation. An hour here or there when our lives seem against all odds and expectations to burst open and give us everything we've ever imagined. Though everyone but children and perhaps even they, knows these hours will inevit inevitably be followed by others far darker and more difficult. Still, we cherish the city, the morning. We hope more than anything for more. <sighs> wow. Every time I read that, I'm just like, wow. I love it so much. And isn't that the nature of life? It really is. So that is what I have for us today for book chat. Um, thank you so much for tuning in for me. And uh, I always adore making these videos and hopefully knowing that you are doing some reading of your own. As usual, I would love to hear from you if you do uh, ever decide what you would like to share, what you're reading. All right, take care and I'll see you next time. Thanks.